The Flash is a student forum produced by students. For students. Students make all content decisions. Research. Write, shoot, and broadcast news stories they deem important to the Eastview community. Stay tuned for The Flash. Hey Eastview, welcome back to this week's episode of The Flash. I'm EB. And I'm Ezra. And we have three interesting stories for you this week. Our first story is about Eastview students fixing up cars. And our second story is about the CNA class. And our third story is about chess. Stay, Stay tuned, tuned for, for The Flash. Flash. Hey Ezra, don't you drive a Jeep that says Ezzy? Yeah, I do. My mom customized it for me. Well, I heard about other ECU students who customize cars as well. Zach has a story. Have you ever thought about how much time and money goes into building these type of custom cars? Well, these few ECU students we have with us have a great first-hand experience. Let's take a look. Oh, for building, I'd say cars take around like two weeks. Sometimes the longest we've ever taken was like a month on a project. Um, my brother Gavin uh, and my uncle they have been into these fast, nice looking cars for many, many years and I kind of just fell into it. These guys get a lot of their inspiration from their imagination. When they buy a car, they already have a preset idea, but they also take a lot of inspiration from sites like Instagram. The process of building the car is first we go for performance, get it running how we want it to run, and then we go cosmetics and after it looks and feels how we want it to feel, then we go for the extreme stuff that get, makes the money. These guys aren't unique to car building. You can find a lot more people like this in the area. Our area is very popular in the car building community, holding meets almost every weekend. Um, Riley was the first person we met. He, we walked into his garage and he had like $20,000 worth of tools. So then we knew this is the spot we were gonna hang out and work on cars. And then it, me, Gavin, and Gabe have been friends for almost seven years now. So when we met Riley, we came together and we just, this is the garage. I don't really resell like these guys do. I just build them to build them. The car community is very close knit and it's pretty cool to see how simply building cars can bring these students so close together. With all the projects, and all the cars we've had, I'd say anywhere from fifty to sixty thousand dollars on cars. Signing off from the Flash with help from Naya and Damien. This is Zachariah. Customizing cars is a fun activity and a great way to explore your passions. Actually, you can explore unique passions at school too, especially with the CNA class. CNA class. The Certified Nursing Assistance class. Lizzie has the story. As you were signing up for classes this year, you might have noticed the career development courses offered in District 196. I knew I wanted to take some sort of career development class to further my education in the field I was going into. I want to pursue a career in nursing, and so this is a really good way um, to just get your foot in the door and just start that process. At the end of the CNA course, students have the opportunity to get their certification and become certified nursing assistants. It provided me the opportunity to get a job as a CNA still even in high school. I've had quite a few Eastview students making really great pay, even as juniors. I'm working at the hospital or a nursing home. They have tuition um, reimbursement programs um, to get further education in nursing. Not only does the class provide jobs for these students, it helps them prepare and save money for college. A lot of colleges will start looking at that um, on your resume. It's not always the grades they're looking at, they're also looking at what kind of experience you have or what classes you've taken previous. Taking this class will allow me to jump forward like a semester. Having taken this class, you're saving about $2,000 when you go to college because some, class, or some colleges require this class. And the smartest people in those nursing programs were the people who have worked as CNAs even just for a year. Signing off for The Flash with help from Katie, this is Lizzie. I never knew how much it took to become a nurse. EB, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just playing chess. Chess is for 60 year olds. Actually, it's becoming a lot more popular throughout the age groups. KG has the story. At Eastview, chess is getting more traction. And every week, more and more students are playing it. I came across chess based on some of my friends playing it in class. I was like, hey, look, that looks like a kind of cool game to play. Then I started playing it. And I wanted to play it because I like beating people in chess. The main factor is really, it's a pretty good pastime. If students get bored in class, they're like, let me pop up chess because it has a kind of educational kind of meaning behind it because people feel like they're smart playing it. 
So I guess they're kind of learning while playing it and that's why a bunch of people like playing it in class. It's really that chess is really unique in the way you can play it. Like no game is going to be similar to the last game since there's just so many combinations. So you can't really predict what's going to happen. You have to think at every single step. Chess has been around for a long time and it's just been gaining popularity at Eastview now. However, some students have been with chess before it was trending. I've been playing for like uh, three years, I want to say. Uh, I think the main contributing factor is that people recognize chess like a game that's equal to like other online games. So people think that chess has equal strategies and more competitiveness than they previously saw it. I think that unique things about chess is that you have to think beyond your move. You have to think what the opponents do and think before that. Like, so you have to make a move thinking what the opponent will do. This is KG, with help from Matthew and Ryan, signing off from the Flash. Oh, now I get why you're playing it. It's a lot more fun than you think. Well, that's all we have for you this week, Eastview. Stay, Stay tuned, tuned for, for the, the credits. credits. Beyond our halls and classrooms, hidden from the student eye, lies the very secret TV studio. I am Aussie Australia. And I am Natalie Geographic. And on this very special episode of Finding Fornicoria, we finally made it to the special place. For the TV studio is the home of the rare and devious Fornicoia. Only one exists here in this very place. Let's go in and take a look. Now, mates, we have to be very careful. A wild Fornicoia is very timid. That's right. We have to be careful or we might spook it off. Look, over there. Oh my, should we explore deeper? Around here, it's hollow. Wait, Natalie. Wait. You know what this means, viewers? I think we made an amazing discovery. Oh my! A live discovery. Fornicoia may be a tunneling animal. What's going on out here? What? You're not a fornicoia. No. Wait. What were you doing in its nest? Oh, um, in Forney's office. Nothing. No, but um, if you're looking for him, he isn't here today. And to think of it, he hasn't been here all week. That might be something. I have to go. Well, you heard it here, folks. Looks like the Fornicoia has left its habitat. Check back again soon. And make sure you stay tuned in for next week's episode of Finding Fornicoia. <laughs>